Did you know that with a heart of service, you can join Rotary? Rotary is made up of over 1.4 million volunteers across the world working to change their communities and themselves. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tagline where we unveil Rotary District 9212. In today's episode, we talk all about membership. We have a rich panel that is made up of our district governor nominee, Wairimo Njage, our regional coordinator and vice chair of strategy in the district, Saad Rahman, and we have our district membership chair, James Mwangi. The panel today will be hosted by Rotarian Moses Kemibaro. So I have a few fact or fiction questions for our eminent panel here today. We're here to share the good times and the bad times in, in, in a very simple manner of what it means to be when you join the Rotary family. Hello, welcome to Tagline. As we focus on membership, I think I'd like to start off maybe with just hearing a little bit more about yourselves, uh, your Rotary story and your background, both professionally and within Rotary. Possibly starting off with you, Jimmy. Okay. Hi, hi, Moses. Nice to see you guys. Uh, my name is Jimmy Mwangi. Um, I'm in the hospitality industry. Um, uh, my classification is uh, hospitality services. I head a team of professionals. I work for a hotel in Naivasha. And I've been doing that for <laughs> many years. Um, in Rotary, um, like you had said, I'm the district membership chair. And I lead a team of Rotarians. Uh, that coordinate all the membership activities for the district um, and especially the district governor and the clubs and the members within our district. Thank yeah. you, Jimmy. Thanks. Barimu, maybe you can also share your background as well. Sure, and, and really wonderful to be on this uh, panel today with my esteemed uh, Rotarian uh, colleagues. My name is Wairimon Jage, and I'm the district governor nominee for District 9212. I work in the education sector, although my background and training is not education. Um, I used to work in management consulting for um, many years, and I was happy to bring my skills on board into the international school sector. Um, I'm currently also serving in the district leadership team as the governance and ethics chair, supporting the district governor, clubs, and committees across the district in embedding strong governance and ethics uh, structure systems and processes uh, to support club operations to, you know, just to run more effectively so that we're really impactful um, in what we do as, as a district in terms of stewardship um, of our resources. Thank you so much, Varimu. Saad, maybe you can also tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, no problem. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the invite this morning, Moses and inviting my uh, distinguished colleagues to, to the right of me. Um, my name is Saad Rahman. Um, I'm presently the uh, Vice Chair for Strategy for the District, uh, but I'm also the Regional Coordinator for Eastern Kenya. And we'll talk about how the district is split up as we go along. I'm a banker by profession. Um, I've lived in a number of countries, um, and I'm presently uh, where we're doing this uh, take. Uh, I'm the CEO of Salam Investment Bank, um, and, and I've been a banker for many, many years. Um, I joined Rotary back in 2015 in Tanzania, uh, progressed through a number of clubs, and I'm now here in Nairobi uh, in RC Upper Hill. And it, it's a great opportunity to be able to, to tell the story of Rotary uh, and membership to members, but also to those who want to join Rotary as well. So as is in order, I would like to start with you, Wairimu. Uh, tell us a little bit about your Rotary journey. How did this start? How did you become a member? What is it that appeals to you about Rotary? And of course, congrats again uh, for becoming the district governor nominee. Thank you. And, and I'd love to say a little bit more about that, um, Moses. Well, my journey in Rotary actually began in, in Rotaract. Um, I won't say how many years ago, uh, but <laughs> I was my um, uh, a younger self and, and very interested in, in joining uh, a community that allowed one to, um, to serve and also grow as a professional. So I joined wrote the Rotaract Club of Westlands as a, as a charter uh, member. 
uh, which fell under the Rotary Club of, of Westlands. Um, and uh, we have Rotarians like Sonia Kantari of uh, the Rotary Club of Muthaiga uh, and past district governor uh, Bimal who are, and uh, Rotarian uh, Jay Manek who are also uh, members or associated with the Rotary Club. Fast forward, um, once I pursued my postgraduate studies, I, I left that world, but I still had a hunger to join Rotary. Uh, so when an opportunity came to join the Rotary Club of, of Lavington, um, I did so and, and formally joined in 2016. I would describe myself as not having followed the, the, the traditional path to district uh, leadership. And I love that about Rotary, that we're adapting and becoming flexible in line with our action plan for the next couple of years in terms of allowing different Rotarians from different perspectives to serve and lead and, and to grow and to bring their uh, experiences um, to, to the table. Rotary. Fantastic, thank you. Saad, I'd like to come to you now. Um, and it's something that you said about you know the club experience, our fellowships where you go to your club, sometimes even at the end of a bad day, and somehow it lifts you up in your, your friendships and so forth. But I was thinking about the global aspects of Rotary, specifically around membership in our district, uh, 9212. What have been some of your perspectives around the global nature of Rotary and also the international friendships that it fosters? Rotary has, for me, it has two areas, if you will. Uh, one is the projects, which is the impact on society. Um, but the second part is Rotary can become a family for you. Uh, it's, it's the same uh, uh, experience that Warimu talked about. You, you finish your day job and then your evening session begins or a lunch club or a breakfast club, depending on how your Rotary meets or how your Rotary club meets. But that's really your second family. And it's a second family that celebrates with you. Births, deaths. Um, one of our club members got married yesterday um, and, our, and our WhatsApp group exploded. We, we, we're here to share the good times and the bad times in, in, in a very simple manner of what it means to be when you join the Rotary family. And, and, and when you join the Rotary family, um, I, I would never say to you that one club is right. You, you, you quoted me earlier yes. when, when we were sitting outside, is go and see a number of clubs. Um, as much as James' club is different to Wairimu's club, to my club, to your club, um, each club has an individual DNA. But at the heart of each club is the desire to do good within, within the structured framework of Rotary, but also it becomes your second home. And, and if you spend enough time in Rotary, you find it ends up becoming your primary home sometimes as well. And, and you really got to learn how to balance that. Um, our district is, has about 144 clubs um, and we're growing. We're, we, we want to charter clubs in different parts of the uh, country where we don't have a presence. We're, we're about um, 3,800 members, 3,900 members. Uh, this year, or at the end of August, we were the second fastest growing district in Africa. Um, and Africa is the entire 53 countries, uh, which is in a zone by itself. Um, we, we are growing membership because Rotarians, people come to Rotary for their own reasons. But, but they come to an organization that is structured in delivering good. Um, and that for so many people is, is important. They don't just want to give money. They actually want to see how the money is spent. They want to feel that human impact. And that project visit is really uh, the emotional uh, apex of what we do in Rotary. You go and see who you're helping. You feel the joy when that service that you are giving, whether it be toilets, whether it be water, um, and I've got a slight, if, if I may, yeah, sure. um, our, our club, we, we, we do something in Kibera. And, and sometimes people ask, what is the cost of Rotary? Um, and I can tell you that the cost of doing good in Rotary is 250 shillings. And I can tell you that cost because we went and gave 80 um, mathematical geometry sets to the girls who had never had geometry sets like this before. And they gave us this afterwards. Um, and really what it shows is two girls on top of a globe, sitting on top of a pencil, and they've got one wrench and one book. 
if you don't educate girls, um, your GDP fails to grow. And, and, that's, and that's not anecdotal, that's fact-based. And as, as, we, as we look to go around the district, one of the key aspects of membership growth is more and more females are joining Rotary. Um, we're seeing more and more female leadership in, in Rotary. Uh, we're seeing it not only at the district level, but at the international level, where last year we had the first Rotary International uh, president, Jennifer Jones, uh, was a woman, but we're also going to have a next RI president who will also be a woman as well. So more and more women are coming to Rotary. Um, and that means that it bringing in new ideas, new thought processes, um, but everyone who comes into Rotary, regardless of your gender, regardless of your faith, you're there to do good. And, and Rotary provides that home um, or that infrastructure that you're looking for. Fantastic. I think what you just said dovetails very nicely with Jimmy's question. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, um, <coughs> as a Rotarian and somebody who's been so active in the district, I think for the better part of a decade mm -hmm. in various leadership roles, I would like you to share with us maybe a journey of personal transformation, something that through your Rotary membership and possibly even coming back to your profession uh, in terms of what you do as a hotelier, is there any journey or any story you can share with us of something that you found quite transformative because of being in Rotary? Um, yeah, I've been in Rotary for, what, 18 years. So wow. I've got uh, lots of uh, experiences. But I think three, three of them really come to mind. Yes. Um, I joined Rotary in 2005. Um, my boss uh, <laughs> invited me to a Rotary meeting. So I started my Rotary journey in, in Nairobi, but later moved to Naibasha. And two years after that, um, I was president of my club. But I remember that year was 207, 208. And in 2007, Kenya had its elections, and mm. unfortunately, we got into post-election violence. So when we came back to uh, January 2008, there was more than we could do. Uh, we had to help people rebuild their homes. We had to you know, help clothe people, feed people. Uh, we had quite a number of uh, activities um, around peace building and conflict resolution. So. Uh, for me, those few months of, you know, between January 2008 to about maybe mm -hmm. April or thereabout were very intense and, and very rewarding. There was quite a lot to do um, amidst all the, the chaos that had, had come up. So um, that to me was, was an area and a time that, you know, Rotary really came mm -hmm. through for, for the community. The other one was um, in 2015. Um, there was an initiative by the Rotary Club of Nairobi East to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm. So they invited quite a number of clubs from all over and Rotarians to come in. And really what they were trying to do is to raise money. Um, and, and through that, and, you know, I'd never hiked, forget about, you know, thinking about hiking Kilimanjaro. Uh, and I got in quite late. Um, I think it was in August. So the, the first hike came and they were like, oh, yeah, let's go to Longonot. I happened to be at work, so I thought, ah, maybe I shall longer not so. Not too far, yeah. Not too far, so I came in, I, I joined the hike, and they were like, no, 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 the next one is in two weeks. I don't know, we're doing this and the other. And before I knew it, uh, you know, we were training, and uh, we were to climb Mount Kilimanjaro at the end of uh, December 2014, but it, it moved into January, the, the beginning of January 2014. But one, uh, the interesting beat was, for somebody who had never hiked, I was able to go up and actually scale Mount Kilimanjaro. Wow. So that was a personal feat, which was quite, quite good. But the really interesting thing about it is um, through those efforts and the people who supported me, um, our club was able to get um, about 650,000 shillings that came back that went directly into doing community projects um, in our local community in Naivasha. So. Um, something that was fun, you know, seemed like, you know, this was a thing we were doing with my friends, was able to, you know, realize quite a lot of money for us and the clubs that uh, were um, organizing this, like Nairobi East. So I was able to see real money come back and do real work in the, in the community. Um, the other one was um, in my work as, a, as Rotary and doing projects. Um, I got involved with what's called a vocational training team. And what a vocational training team is, is a group of professionals, um, usually from um, 
a country outside, outside ours. In our particular case, there were medical professionals. So the identified a need at the uh, district hospital in Naivasha. Um, and, and the need was really um, to reduce the child mortality. Mm. Um, so what they discovered is there is a condition called uh, birth asphyxia. So as, as kids are being born, if you don't get um, to breathe well, uh, within the first minute of life, then if you don't die, then um, you get you know, complications um, that stunt and, and retard your growth. But to reverse that, it's almost like doing um, CPR for kids. So it's a simple technique, but has far-reaching uh, uh, interventions in, in, in the community. So uh, a doctor had, had seen this, uh, had talked to her Rotary Club in the U.S., uh, she had been able to mobilize uh, doctors, um, and they were looking for a Rotary lead. I'm not a doctor, um, but you know they were looking for a Rotarian. So I was able to uh, lead the team and coordinate the activities with the doctors and the midwives at the um, Naivasha District Hospital. So that also opened up a whole new world of uh, medical and, and what can happen. So um, Rotary was able to come through this grant and, you know, one, raise money to provide uh, mannequins, which were used for, mm. um, for show, show and tell. So you basically have mannequins. This is a mom, this is a kid, and this is what you do. Um, and they were able to get uh, you know, quite a number of uh, you know, very well-placed doctors in the U.S. to come to Kenya to train our doctors who are going, going to train the midwives. So we were there through that whole process. Um, and after two years, we had a very successful um, intervention at the hospital. So we believe that, um, you know, maybe conservatively, we might have saved, you know, maybe 400 kids. Wow. So, you know, I was able to get, you know, real impact, um, you know, see Rotary at work. I was able to engage, you know, constructively in the community. And even in areas that were not primarily my, uh, my area of focus, um, and, and those are just some of the stories that I have personally had and, and those are the things that, you know, maybe keep me in, in Rotary and we keep learning and finding new ways to communicate and to connect with, with, with others as we move along. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jimmy, yeah. for sharing. I think what I'm hearing you say mm -hmm. is that it's not just personal transformation, but being a Rotarian becomes almost waves of transformation that come from the person to the club, to the, community, to the community, to the entire country, exactly. through the initiatives yeah. and uh, various projects that we undertake. That's true. So that's, that's incredible, true. isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to come back to you again, Werimu, and I think I want to ask you a very key question. What does it take? What is the value? What is the importance? What is involved in being in a member, membership of Rotary? Wow, that's, that's such a great question. And, and I'm so... I, I, I'm, my heart is so warmed by hearing all these stories shared by, uh, by Jimmy and, and, and by Saad, because that's, that's really it. That's what it means to be a member of Rotary. Um, so let me start from the, the very big picture and then come, then come home. Uh, Saad mentioned earlier that we were at the Zone Institute in, in Lusaka, um, where African from who are Rotarians gather and hear about their achievements and the plans for, for the future. And our plan for the future is to grow our membership by 60,000. So that's, that's a big, hairy goal, but we're, we're making progress. So coming to Rotary allows any one individual, um, because we cannot do this on our own, to come together in a club as a member to try and solve in their own community some of these um, spaces. The Rotary International President attended the meeting and has, um, through, through Rotary International, has granted four countries, uh, Mozambique, Nigeria, Chad, and DRC, $30 million to resolve issues around pneumonia and uh, diarrheal diseases, which kill, kill a lot of children um, under five. Now, which organization can you really come around that allows you to engage in Rotary from the position of your day job, but still come around some of these, um, these issues? And when you come back home, we, you will hear stories like this 
from all across clubs in the district who are making uh, an impact. Jimmy has shared some. Um, my own club, Lavington, is beginning a project to support young people between 15 to 24 who are struggling with mental health issues. And it'll be, they'll be provided with advice through a USSD uh, platform, as you know. But what does it take to be a member and, and plug into these um, opportunities? One, it may, it, it's a decision that you make to offer yourself for service. Um, you are invited into Rotary. So, and, and I appreciate that because Rotary, being a Rotarian means that you're committed to a course of action, that you're going to participate in your club, uh, join in the activities, uh, pay a subscription, your dues to, to demonstrate that you're putting your money where your mouth is and, and participate in meetings, organizing events and, and club fellowships. Um, and a lot of people join Rotary for diverse reasons and there's nothing wrong with that. Perhaps you want to, to, to get to know a group of lawyers or um, you know, grow your business, extend your services, or just make friends. All those reasons are equally valid, but um, one then must come together around the central idea that we are all here to serve. Uh, and there, there's certain consistent standards that, that we, must, we must meet. Also at the individual level, one has the opportunity to hear about what's going on in their country at the district conference and assembly. Uh, and attend other district meetings that allow them to, to hear about what other clubs are doing. Really for a very reasonable, uh, very reasonable um, uh, cost. So here's a question that I think our audience would um, appreciate. And I think it's a question around, you know, the aspect of inclusivity. I think there's a preconceived notion by many who are not Rotarians that it's somehow perhaps not for them. Some instances, because a lot of Rotarians tend to represent very successful people, there might be a sense that, is this really for me? And as we look into that, maybe we can also talk about the different types of membership that exist within Rotary. So one can find their fit. They can join the traditional club that meets four times um, a month and has uh, a fellowship at lunchtime or in the evening or at breakfast with a speaker, or join a club that is more focused around a cause. Uh, Kenya has the first cause-based club in Africa, an eco-focused club, the Lavington Echo Club, which only focuses on the environment. And um, so if, if you're passionate about that, uh, or even hiking, there's a hiking club, there is that possibility for you. There are those who are very busy and really cannot move from place to place uh, and join a physical meeting. So e-club meetings are, are now a variation that's, that's on offer and probably provides some um, um, adaptation around the, the dues that are formed. So Rotary has something for everybody. We even have satellite clubs, which um, are, don't, I, I think they pay even half the dues of most clubs uh, and may be suitable for areas where incomes may be strained, where people want to come around uh, an idea. I also love the opportunity for the communities that we serve to be organized into a Rotary community core. They don't pay dues, they're attached to Rotary, um, and they may not follow all the, um, you know, the traditions and protocols, but it allows them to plug into the world of, of Rotary, learn who we are, how we organize ourselves, and adapt some of the, uh, the systems that are fairly strong. So that there's, there's, as I said, there's something for everybody in Rotary. Okay. I think we'll dig in a bit more, Jimmy, into the okay. membership types and so forth, but I'd like to come back to Saad first and maybe talk a little bit about the district in terms of the demographics, the geographies we cover, uh, specifically around the membership within District 9212. Sure. Um, I, as I mentioned previously, we're a um, Rotary split into districts, and, uh, and those are uh, geographical areas. So if you look at this district 9212, it, it covers four, four countries, uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, South Sudan, and Eritrea. Uh, Kenya is the largest uh, in, in, in the district. We're about approximately uh, 100 plus clubs. Um, Ethiopia is about 20 clubs. 
um, sorry, yeah, no, uh, Kenya is about 120 clubs. Ethiopia is about uh, 20 clubs. Um, and South Sudan is about four to five clubs. But we're always increasing uh, that uh, goal because you want to be where Rotarians are doing service and where they're doing good. Um, if you look in terms of where we are, um, we're primarily in the bigger cities. Um, the Addis, uh, Mombasa, uh, Juba, um, some in the West, uh, Nakuru, uh, Naivasha. Um, Kisumu has a number of clubs, and obviously uh, Mombasa. So we really want to make sure that Rotary's footprint is felt on the, you know, the concept of boots on the ground mm. is so critical. Um, if you want to grow an organization, you can't be waving the flag from 200 kilometers away. It's, it's so much is lost in translation. When you have Rotarians on the ground in a club, it becomes a beacon to attract other, um, other people to work with you. But Rotary doesn't work in isolation. You know, we work with, with UNICEF, we work with WHO. Um, as we saw in Lusaka when it came to malaria, um, Rotary Zambia is working with uh, President Biden's um, malaria uh, initiative, uh, PIM that is called. So when partners see that Rotary is present, we attract those partners to work with us. So the goal this year, and, and we will carry on to next year, is to set up clubs in areas where we have a weak footprint. Um, it strengthens the brand. It strengthens the link between Rotary and the communities that we serve. And it allows members to not only say, you know, I'm not in Nairobi, I'm not in Naivasha, I'm not in Nakuru, but you know, I'm in Mwatate, let me have a club there where I can go to. Or I'm in, in, in Wingi, where we're working on dams, we can, we can support the club over there. So the clubs must always, uh, we want to keep on growing, so we always have that footprint there. Um, but also in Rotary, we're not only looking at people our age, the uh, interviewees that you're looking at, but we also have interactors and rotor actors that are for younger people, both university-based and, and, and school-based as well. So as, as was Wairimu's journey, where, where you started off at, at a uh, younger age, uh, not to be disclosed, but, but Rotary can be a partner to you for giving good from all the way from school until you become a senior professional and beyond. We as Rotary, we want to attract people who believe in our ethos. The ethos of giving good, of giving back to society. The ethos of where you want to be with family members. So, so, the, so the process of Rotary is not just you walk in and you say, I want to be a Rotarian. Um, you have to feel that Rotary is right for you. But we also want to feel that you joining Rotary is the right place for you to be with us as well. Because it's, it's, a, it's a journey, it's a commitment. We're committed to growth in areas where we haven't been or we've traditionally had a weak footprint. Um, we want to make sure that the boots on the ground ideology is applied. We, we want to keep on growing membership um, in both demographics um, and in vocation. You know, one of the great advantages of Rotary is sometimes when you're, uh, whether you're, you're in hospitality or education or, or banking, those are the people you meet on a day in, day out basis. But the beauty of being in Rotary is it cuts across all vocations. It cuts across genders. It cuts across races. It cuts across faith. You're united by a common creed of doing good. And those are the people that we want to have in Rotary. And that, as, as we build our footprint across, those are, that, those are the uh, ethics and the virtue that we sell of Rotary to attract like-minded people. So, Saad, I'd like to go a little bit further with you around the thinking where a potential member, a potential Rotarian, what should they look for in a club? What are the things that they should look out for if they want to join a Rotary club? So, I think, um, you know, in, and I'll just give you an example of, of Nairobi, Correct. where we have about 60 plus clubs, give or take. And it really covers the entire um, municipal uh, coverage of Nairobi. We, we are different people um, in, in Rotary. When, when, you, when you go to a club, you, you may find a club is too big for you. Maybe you find, might find a club is too small for you. Or you might find a club that is full of too many lawyers and bankers or, or, or hospitality. 
um, you, you may want a club that is close to your place of work or your um, or where you live. Mm -hmm. um, you, you may find that your Mondays and Tuesdays are tied up. So you want a Wednesday or a Thursday club or you've got more time on the weekend. So you're looking for a Saturday or Sunday club. Luckily enough in Rotary, um, at least within the Nairobi area, we have the possibility to cater for that. Um, but I, I will always say to you, and, and I said it at your club, go and see the clubs. Go to as many different clubs as you want. Um, feel what each club, each individual club's DNA is all about. Um, there are some clubs that are more active, um, and by that I mean a bit louder, and, 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 and we mentioned a few. Oh yeah, we know them. <laughs> we know them. Um, th th there are some clubs that are very big that you may not feel uh, your voice may not be heard always. Um, we all have our different reasons for why we're in our own individual clubs and, and our journeys that, that, that got us there. But technology is, some of the th is one of the things that we're developing more and more in Rotary. There's, there's a great app called Club Locator. You, you punch it in. Uh, wherever you are in the world, whatever city you're in, it will tell you if there's a club there. That, so we, we all embrace Rotary but there's a key underlying principle. The more you put into Rotary, the more you'll get out of it. Um, all of us sitting here are active in the district, but it's because we give our time effort to actually be there to do good. You, you need to find your own, um, own journey within Rotary, but Rotary, if you walk that path with Rotary, Rotary will never let you down. I think there's something very profound you've said, you know, which is almost that when you become a member of a club or you become a Rotarian and the club that you choose to become a member of, it's almost like joining a family, isn't it? You become a part of this team or crew that you hang out with every week, that you plan projects with. And I think it's that inclusion, that involvement that really does make your membership come to life. So finding that right fit is critical. And there are many drivers behind that. Uh, but again, it's just saying that there's a lot of diversity, especially in Nairobi, uh, and there is opportunities to try different clubs before you find the one that's going to be the right family for you. Coming back to membership, James, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like you to talk a little bit more about membership, you know, talking about the types of clubs, what's going on within the district, uh, what are the possibilities here? Maybe you can tell us a little bit more from a district perspective um, around the current scenario when it comes to membership. Okay, um, and a lot of that has actually been alluded to either by Wairimo or by Saad, but um, we are a multi-country district. We have four we have four countries in our district, okay. Ethiopia, Eritrea, Kenya, uh, South Sudan. So South Sudan is, 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 is a big country. It's even bigger than Kenya. Uh, a lot of people might not know that. Mm -hmm. um, but what you find is they only have four clubs. And three of those four clubs are within the Juba area. Or, you know, and then they have one in a place called Wow. Mm. So I think South Sudan um, is, is, is is open. It's open for business. Uh, it's open for, for Rotary. A lot needs to be done um, to uh, be more visible, to educate people about what Rotary has, but those are some of the opportunities that are there. Another big country is Ethiopia. Ethiopia has, what, 120 million people, but it only has 19 clubs, and it has only 373 members. Massive so you potential. can imagine the, the potential that, uh, that that country, country has. Um, Eritrea has been a bit close. There's only one club in, in Asmara, uh, but I'm sure with time things will, will open up. Um, Kenya obviously takes the bulk of that. So we are 117 clubs in Kenya currently and about 3,300 or thereabouts uh, members. Um, so in Kenya, what you find is there's a huge concentration in, in the major cities like uh, Saad had mentioned, but we need to go out into areas such as uh, you know, Moyale, Wajir, uh, Garissa. Uh, we've also got quite a number of county headquarters that don't have uh, Rotary clubs. So um, in as much as we are growing Rotary, um, we're obviously focusing on mapping some of those areas that have potential in terms of people um, need uh, and trying to see what is required to give them uh, the support that, that, that's needed to open up in those areas. Now, when it comes to the different kinds of clubs, uh, diversity is big. Um, you know, the bulk of the clubs are the traditional clubs where you, 
um, you know, have like say the Rotary Club of, of Upper Hill. Um, you meet at a certain location. Um, most Rotary meetings, in fact, all Rotary meetings, you know, last about a week, sorry, about an hour. And we meet once a week. So um, Rotarians have a once a week commitment to attend your, your meeting. Um, however, because of the huge footprint that, that Rotary has, if you're not able to attend a meeting in your own club, you can make up in any other club, you know, in the district, in the world, that's a Rotary club. So we are, we are quite flexible. Um, there are some people who are in areas that don't have access to Rotary clubs, um, and that's what gave rise to e-clubs. So you find that uh, e-clubs meet online, they meet virtually, so they can be, their membership can be from anywhere uh, in the country, in the world, in the district. Um, and they tend to serve um, those members who, you know, either uh, travel a lot or don't have the time to go to, to a meeting. Uh, but usually those that are in areas that are not served by a Rotary Club. So you're able to come together. So, so that's... So hypothetically, if, like Sad mentioned, we don't have a club in Garissa. Yeah. I could, could be join, working and living in exactly. Garissa and I could join an e-club. Yes, and there are two e-clubs. There's okay. an e-club Safari okay. and there's an e-club of Rift Valley. So there are two clubs already in, in the district and both of them are in Kenya. So you can be from anywhere. You can be in South Sudan, you can be wherever and still join the, the e-clubs. Um, another type of club is a corporate club. So we have corporate clubs, uh, currently we have uh, corporate clubs um, in Safaricom, uh, East African breweries, um, the banks, uh, Stanbic and INM Bank. And recently we uh, had one from Kenjen called Generate. So what you tend to find is those institutions uh, are well organized, have many people. Uh, and because of uh, you know, the, the amount of time that they spend at work, uh, if you're able to carve, you know, one hour during this, whatever, then you've got a good number of people who are in the same location and can meet and, and can do good. So um, that's been something that's been coming up in our district in the last few years, uh, which is also new. So it also gives people an opportunity to, to be part of doing good within your organization. Um, we already also talked about cost-based clubs. There's one, um, Lavington Eco, that's... Uh, coalescing around the environment. Um, we are looking at uh, possibly a few others um, that have, you know, things that, that hold them together. So I think we are targeting the hiking clubs. Quite a number of people are hiking uh, and there might be something out there to bring all these hikers together. Uh, the golfers are another one. There's quite a number of people play golf um, and they spend a lot of time in the golf course. So you might find that uh, the golf course already provides a venue, uh, one extra hour from the five hours they have spent there, you know, there might be something there. So we hope we'll be able to, to do that. Rotaractors, uh, and these tend to be the younger, you know, college uh, students. Once they graduate, they have spent so much time together uh, and they're like, okay, we don't know, we probably will not feel as comfortable in a traditional uh, Rotary Club. Why can't we hang out and form our own Rotary Club? So you're finding Rotaractors who are, you know, together in college, have graduated and have moved on, preferring to get together and forming Rotary Clubs. And we're also helping them uh, do that. Um, a little bit was talked about the Rotary Community Calls. Um, where you find that some communities have been impacted by Rotary, um, but they are not either well organized or they are not uh, financially able to meet the dues and the requirements of a traditional club um, and would want to do good in their community. Mm. So what they do is they part, the community now partners with a Rotary club mm. and Rotary provides the mechanism and the structure to be able to allow them to do that at very little cost, if, if none, to, to them, uh, but also for Rotary to be able to channel funds and resources back into the community. Um, you find some that are satellite clubs. You might find that uh, in some areas, yes, you have some people, but you don't have a critical mass of, of people. Um, and you can be a satellite club that's attached to, to a Rotary club. 
So you find that maybe, let me just give you an example. Uh, the Rotary Club of Watamu is a Rotary Club, but they also have a, a satellite club mm. for people who are a little bit further out, but are not big enough to form their own club, at least not right now, and are attached to, to that club and are able to do uh, projects. So I think the world is evolving, Rotary is evolving, and um, as diversity changes, we'll be able to see what else we can do to meet people at, you know, to meet people where they are and, and how they are and see how we can, um, you know, um, work together to be able to, to have an impact in the society. Thank you yeah, so much, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, I want yes. to ask you two more questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> One is, what is the process of membership? How does somebody actually become a member? And within the same framework, <laughs> the vocation or the profession that that person has? What does that, how does that play into your membership as well? Okay, so generally, people hear about Rotary from various places. Uh, you could hear about it from your family, your friends who are Rotarians or who know Rotarians. Um, you could have heard because you probably saw a billboard or you've been associated with a project that Rotary has done. So there are various ways that people hear about Rotary. So the next step is, okay, I've heard about Rotary, so what do I do? So for those that have probably heard about it from either their friends, their family, their colleagues, then that's a much easier process because um, they're able to tie back and can I get somebody to introduce me? Uh, and, and what that means is, you know, inviting somebody to a Rotary club. Uh, and the good thing is because, you know, like I said, Kenya has 117 clubs. So just about anywhere in Kenya, there's a Rotary Club. So say you're in Embu. Uh, I'm, I'm physically not in Embu, but I know people who are in the Rotary Club of Embu. I can quickly find them out. So I can say Embu probably meets on Tuesday or Wednesday. Please attend that meeting. A Rotarian will be there. They'll walk you through and you'll be able to attend. We've got people who just don't know what to do. So they go online and they type Rotary, I wanna join, and they're able to get onto the Rotary sites. So Rotary identified that quite a number of people are seeking these solutions and have actually come up with a way to direct those leads. So Rotary comes and says, oh, you're interested in joining a Rotary club? Tell us who you are, where you meet, where you go to, where you stay, where you work, you know, what city you live in, your email and whatever. So it goes into this lead database. And the lead database now is uh, sent out to the district and we get it. So we are able to tell these are the people who have made an inquiry, these are their contacts, and we actually have teams that contact them um, to be able to now place them and introduce them and invite them to a Rotary Club. So once you get into a Rotary Club, then that's your first, I guess, your first interface with, with Rotary. So you go into the club, you get to see what happens. Um, is this thing for me? Um, you know, the Rotary, uh, membership uh, directors and the team in the club are able to now take it from there and make the process of subsequent visits um, easier. And in that process, then you are able to figure out, you know, what's required. So typically what happens, um, potential Rotarians, you know, are given about two to three months just to keep coming to the clubs. Is this thing for you? Does this thing look like something that would interest you? Uh, it also gives them a chance to see other Rotary clubs and then compare. It also gives them a chance to, to just get, and, you know, get a feel for, is this a right fit for me? And if it is, then the process continues. They become members and, and the rest is, is history. So generally, that's how it happens. It culminates in you going to a physical club and the club taking over and, 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 and just explaining to you what Rotary is. How important have you felt it has been for new or potential members to get involved in projects and club activities so they can really get a flavor of whether it's going to work for them or not, or more importantly, whether their membership is going to be enriching to their lifestyles. I think it's so important for both parties to walk the journey, the potential or interested member to spend time getting to know the club. Once they've made a decision that this is the club I'm really interested in, once they've done the merry-go-round of visiting various clubs, I think it's important for them to, to get a feel of what Rotary um, really is. And for the club to also feel comfortable that yes, this person will fit in, they'll add, um, they'll add value. 
uh, because it, it should be a mutually acceptable relationship. So spending time in projects is a part of it, in events, in fellowships, or whatever it is that really makes up the life of the club is, is so important. Important. Um, in the Governance and Ethics Committee, we've also incorporated uh, a, a special project. We are embarking on developing a diversity, equity and inclusion policy for the district that I believe will also inform how we engage potential members and, and even and current members um, as well. So that's also an exciting opportunity and demonstration of how the district is adapting and evolving to meet the uh, to meet current re re uh, realities and be fit for the journey ahead. Great, so I'd, I'd like to come back to you. Sure. There's something you said earlier, which I think is a perfect complement to this question. How do you find a balance between your personal life, your professional life, and your Rotary life? And I'm going to say this because I remember I've never been a Rotary president, but I was a Rotaract president, and for that one year. All I remember my boss asking me a few times is, are you working for Rotary? Are you working for <laughs> our company? So how do you do it, Sad? You've got a busy day. You've got so much to do. In fact, I think there's a running joke amongst Rotarians that Rotary is for busy people. Uh, how do you manage it? How does a person like you do it? You have to find that right balance. And, and, and I won't say it's easy. Um, and, and I won't say it's without sacrifices as well. Um, we use the word sacrifice, it's... If you're, if you're going to commit to something, let's try to do it properly. Let's try to give your effort to making sure it, it happens. Um, Rotary also, in return, gives you avenues of developing your leadership, of, of managing volunteers. Managing volunteers, if you're, if, if you're a bank or, or you're in education or hospitality, you end up managing your own similar ecosystem sort of uh, people. But, but in Rotary, you end up managing, you talked about vocations, there, there could be 50 vocations in your club. But everyone is committed to one core principle, service above self, of giving back to the community. Um, you, you need to decide and find the right balance between that professional aspect that you talked about. Um, because everyone is a stakeholder in, in, in Rotary. So if, if you talk about family, one of the great things uh, we used to do in DAR was, was when I first joined Rotary, I used to bring my kids to Rotary projects. Fantastic. Um, you, you, you can have a bunch of middle-aged men and women going to a school talking about this and that and that. And it's slightly academic because sometimes you can just go over a child's head. But take that great universal round object called a soccer ball. Get your kids playing and get the kids at the school playing and all issues are solved. So if you really want to feel uh, you're doing for something for Rotary, let your family know what it's all about because you're disappearing once a week for a few hours. A whole weekend. <laughs> or, or for a whole week or for four or five days as, as you travel around because Rotary gives you opportunities to travel. And then, and then when you're, from a professional point of view, try to bring your profession to Rotary. Mm. Um, and, and by that I mean it could be financial support, uh, it could be a skills-based support. You, you, you literally have to plan your calendar um, and say, I know when my Monday is because that's when my club meets. I know what, how I can use my professional links to support Rotary, and I know where my family can play a part. But, but everyone has to find that right balance. And, and, and it goes back to the more you put into Rotary, the more you get out of it. That's not to say that at times your family will be annoyed or your work will say, where are you? Um, and I think the more you take leadership positions in the district, the more you've got to say, you know, I've got to be with the district governor on this, on this trip, or I've got to be sitting in this committees, or I've got to be taking, um, as, as last night, sitting with three of the clubs that I cover in my cluster uh, and arranging for the district governor's visit. Um, and the word sacrifice and commitment came up in that call because we had someone who was saying, oh, I've got to see how this is done. And there was someone else saying, but this is what we do as Rotarians. Um, that balance 
never perfect mm -hmm. is something that you need to find as an individual. And you know what, if you, if you can't find that balance, but you say this is as much time as I can give, or as much money as I can give, that's okay too. You, you don't, not everyone wants to be a district leader. Not everyone wants to write checks for the foundation. You find your own balance. And when you actually see it coming back to you, not in a financial way, but maybe in an emotional sort of way, the feel good factor, you will say, you know what, I'm ready to do more. It is, the balance is yours. But everyone is a winner in that process. Rotary wins with your commitment and you gain from what Rotary gives you as well. Absolutely. In fact, when I think back to my time in Rotaract, uh, I recall so clearly, I had to be very shy when I'd you know, be required to present or talk. Mm -hmm. But when I was thrust into um, leadership as a president, I, I credit Rotary for teaching me how to lead, how to plan, how to present uh, in a way that serves me today professionally as well. So it's almost like a give and take. You know, you give into Rotary, but Rotary also gives you many things in return that you might have not realized it's actually going to come back to you. I think I'd like to ask one more question to James here. Mm -hmm. James, um, a lot is required of a membership uh, scenario as a Rotarian. Uh, the time, the involvement, and so forth. How do we maintain motivation? How do we make our membership rewarding? What are some of the things that compel us? Because at the end of the day, we're all volunteers. We don't actually earn an income. We don't do this for uh, financial reward. Uh, we do this out of almost the goodness of our hearts. So how do we stay motivated as members? What are some of the tips and pointers that come to you? Who's done so much already uh, from a membership standpoint? Um, yeah, and you're right. Um, because diversity has, has, has come in, so you, you have different kinds of people within the same, the same club. But some of the things that have worked or seem to be working, um, like I said, uh, clubs meet once a week. Um, so in a month, you've got, you've got four meetings. So what we've seen work is some clubs are now starting to say, we will have one meeting outside our normal meeting place mm. and time. So if you're a lunchtime club, then you're probably going to meet once a month in the evening, you know, somewhere fun. For social, uh, yes. For social or whatever. You could even meet on a Saturday or whatever it is. So, so what you find is, People stop associating, you know, coming to the meeting to be, you know, too serious, too formal. And it gives them an opportunity once a month to do something different. And that once a month could be anything. You could go, you know, hiking. I'm just giving an example. Um, the next month you could, you know, visit someone's home who has, you know, a baby or whatever it is that could, could have been happening. So by varying the types and places for meetings, uh, that's, that's one of them. The other thing that seems to also work is if you can have interesting guest speakers attend mm. your meetings, then the meetings themselves become interesting in that you are hearing new things from interesting people every week. So the clubs that are able to do, uh, to do that and get you know, good guest speakers you know, ultimately also get good attendance and are able to keep their members together because over and above the normal things that you discuss as Rotarians, you've got something new to, um, to, to, to just pick up and, and learn. The other thing that also seems to work is the clubs that um, are able to um, have their members participate, the clubs that are able to make sure that everybody is involved in something. You are, you are part of a committee. I, and it can be anything. It can be, you know, club admin, it can mm. be community service, it can be fundraising, whatever it is, just get people involved. So the clubs that are able to get people involved in club affairs also get more buy-in and are able to, to, to prosper. Um, but I think the most important thing is to get as many people in your club doing community projects. Because that's really what we are here for. So if you can get clubs and the, and, and the Rotarians themselves to go out in the community and be part of that community in meaningful ways and do projects, then that tends to keep people involved. I am going for my once a week meeting because I know we can do better and do good in, in the community. So those are just some of the quick tips that uh, we've seen uh, working for, for clubs. The other thing that also 
tends to happen and we encourage people is visit other clubs. Because by visiting other clubs, you also get to find out, hey, these guys have got some cool stuff happening. Or, hey, okay, our club is not as bad as we thought because everybody thinks, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so uh, visiting clubs also, just one, you get to meet new people in different places, but also you, you can learn and you can pick up some of the good things and, you know, take them back and, and, and you know, suggest and introduce them to, um, to your club. So you're finding that... Um, you know, people have to start thinking about, you know, what is it that would make things interesting. The other thing that um, is also coming up is, uh, and we do this through monitoring and evaluation, is we have club surveys. So we encourage clubs to do what's called a club satisfaction survey at least once uh -huh. a year. So by doing the survey, people will be able to tell you what is it that they, they are happy about, what is it that they're not happy about, and then based on the results of that, then you're able to, um, you know, um, take, take that input and, and make sure that um, your club is able to get the necessary help. Um, and you at least have insights into what's working and what's not and you're able to make the, the changes. So, Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So I think I have one last question for all of you. Okay. So we'll keep it short. Because <laughs> right. um, I think we're almost out of time. So I'd like your closing remarks on the significance of Rotary membership. What does it mean? And how does it create lasting change in the communities that we serve and the clubs and the people that we associate with? And I'd like to start off with you, Saad. Membership is at the core of Rotary. The more committed you have a member, taking into account the full diversity of uh, faith, gender, demographics, the 1.4 million people that are around the world, uh, DEI and everything, it's that diversity that is our core strength. Diversity in uh, numbers, diversity in footprint around the world, diversity in, in vocation. And, and you don't get that if you're a organization that chooses its memberships through a very monochrome uh, prism. Mm. Um, we are an institution that's now 118, 119 years old. We are evolutionary. We started off in, on a cold, windy day in Chicago to being in over 180, 190 countries around the world. And that, and that growth has been driven by the members that we have in our organization. It's the members who go out and make the sacrifice. It's the members who serve for 18 years. It, it's the members who believe in giving back to the community, that core ethos, that core principle. And whether you've been a member for one day or been, you've been a member for 30, 40 years, there's still something about Rotary that brings you back to fellowship, that makes you pay your dues in year in, year out, and still want to serve. It, it lights a fire in you um, that only grows over time. Fantastic, thank you. Wairimu, what are your thoughts, significance of membership, impact that it brings? Uh, well, our, our rallying call as, as Rotarian stems from our, our vision and mission, and I'll paraphrase, and it's together people create change in their communities and themselves. And there's something in that about membership being about being valued for who you are, and appreciated for who you are. That is such a critical part of the membership experience. We come together as volunteers from different walks of life, from different vocations, but we come together in an environment where we are hopefully appreciated and valued. I would not have known Sa'ad or Jimmy other than really through Rotary. And that's the power of uh, Rotary, it brings people together from different backgrounds um, and allows you to enjoy a very powerful membership experience. So I'd invite anyone who's really reconsidering their Rotary membership or wondering what it's all, a, all about, give it one more chance, uh, plug in, find a way to, um, to, to serve. There's so many opportunities to grow and, in, and growth is indeed uh, possible, as I can firmly attest. Thank you so much, Remember That was wonderful. 
James, hey, I say, Jimmy, <laughs> you can round it off and tell yeah. us what membership means, the impact it brings, and also lasting change. Yeah, I think for me, um, membership is, is people. Um, the change, the resources, the learning, the fellowship, the travel is all with other people. And the interesting thing about Rotary is Rotary is a group of volunteers. So these are not people that are your employees. These are not people who are your family. So you, you really have to figure out how to, to work with other people. So Rotary is, a, is, is in the people business. Um, and, and, and depending on how well they manage that people business, that reflects in the impact that they have in the world. I would want to encourage <clears throat> the Rotarians that are already Rotarians to, to take advantage of all that Rotary has to offer. And for those who are thinking about whether they should or should not, um, I, I, I invite them and encourage them to, to come and see what Rotary has um, and join us in our journey to, to make our communities better. So I have a few fact or fiction questions for our eminent panel here today. Do you have to have an interview before you can join Rotary? In a sense, yes. And the interview process is extended. And it involves you first being invited to join by a member of that particular club and participating in a number of activities uh, to, allow, to allow you be interviewed by club members and for you as well to interview the club to determine if you're both a fit. So it is a mutually agreeable process, hopefully leading to a firm decision for membership in Rotary. Can I form a Rotary club if there is none near me? So think of the guy in Garissa, for instance. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You can form a Rotary club anywhere. Um, typically in our district, you need 25 members. So if you are able to marshal enough interest um, to get 25 members, that's the number that you require. You can form and this can be by a non-Rotarian? It can be by a non-Rotarian, but the process will be formalized through Rotary. Fantastic. Yes. So the doors are open. Basically. The doors are open anywhere in the world. So that was fact and fiction on the tagline. Great. Thank yeah. you so much, Jimmy. Yeah, that was thanks. perfect. Yeah. So once again, thank you for sharing all your perspectives. Verimu, that was wonderful. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to your year <laughs> as governor. So we're looking forward to that. That's right. You know, they say that women make everything work. Huh? That's yeah. But it's a team effort. Yeah. Yes. And Saad, again, the international perspective and what we're doing across the district, that was wonderful. And to our audience, thank you so much for joining us for today's tagline. You've heard it all in terms of membership in the district of 9212 of Rotary International. I hope you've seen value in this conversation and we hope we'll see you in the next one. Asante Nick.